Let's look at some charged particle kinematics in an electric field. All right, what are we talking about here? Charged particles, protons, electrons, or you may just be given a particle with some mass and some charge. Could be anything. Kinematics, from the first part of the course, when we're studying motion, particles under certain accelerations, velocities, positions, etc., and electric field is gonna push them around. That's what we're putting all that together to think about how particles might move. Now, we're going to do the one you usually see, which is to think about kinematics in a uniform, E field. You remember this one, and we're in this case we're going to have it point um, down. So I usually just draw a bunch of the field vectors like this to indicate a uniform electric field, and I try to make them all look the same. Okay. Now you might say, oh, we need to draw the plates, right? Because the plates are what make the field. But in physics, fantasy land of problems, we don't really have to draw the plates. I can make any field I want. Right, so I'm not going to draw the plates. I'm just going to say there's a region of space here that has a uniform electric field. Let's put some axes on it here. We'll say that's in the x direction, and this is in the plus y direction. So this is a uniform field pointing down in the y direction. And if we put a charge in here, say a charged particle or something that has some mass, m, and some charge plus q, it would feel a force down, right? a force pushing it down. So let's see, so uniform field, so it feels a constant force uh, down, minus y. A positive charge would feel a constant force down. A negative charge would feel a force up. So if we wanted to do the kinematics, or solve kinematic problems here, what would we do? Well, we would go to Newton's second law, right? So we'd say some of the forces in the x equals the mass times the acceleration in the x. Same old thing. Well, the sum of the forces in the x are zero. There's no electric field in the x. There's no reason this would feel a force in the x. So zero equals m a in the x. And then you may recall that when you had no acceleration, one of the standard formulas that you would use would be that x equals x naught plus v um, x t. So if you have some initial velocity in the x, it might continue to move it in the x. You might have some initial position, but it's not going to accelerate in the x. So this would be a formula that you could still use when you're thinking about a charged particle. And in the y, some of the forces in the y equals the mass and the acceleration in the y. So this I set up to be a lot like gravity. Right? Gravity is a constant force down on a mass. Here, the electrostatic force is a constant force down. So what you're going to get is that the force, um, in this case, it's QE would be equal to MAY. But if we wanted to do it in this coordinate system, it would be negative, right? Because E is negative, since, so we're not writing the vector, vector part. I'll just put the negative on it. Right? QE would point down in the negative Y direction, because we're assuming Q is positive. So we could write it that way, and that would lead to kinematics equations. You may recall that Y equals y naught plus v y naught um, t. And then you might write it plus 1 half a y t squared. Or you might write in the real acceleration. When you're doing gravity, you wrote minus, minus 1 half g t squared, because g is down. Here, you would also write minus, because it's down. So you'd say it's minus 1 half. And you need the acceleration. So in this case, it's not g. It's the acceleration due to the electrostatic force. It's QE over M. Right? We just divide the M over to figure out what the acceleration is. It's not just a constant G. So minus 1 half QE over M T squared. See, very similar to the kinematics you did um, with gravity. And you could also, all the others would still apply, right? So uh, V final squared would be V initial squared plus 2AD. But A is negative, so it would be minus 2A. Q, E over M, D. That's if you accelerated for some distance in the Y. So all that stuff you learned last time would apply because it's very similar. A uniform field will just push it in one direction. If you put that on one Cartesian axis, then you just apply your standard 
Cartesian kinematics.